Good evening, all you guys and ghouls. Oh gosh, I couldn't even get through that without laughing. <laughs> uh, well, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween to those of you watching the day that I upload this video. And happy other day if you're watching it at a different time. Inktober is officially over and this is my 31st drawing for this month. Holy cow. <laughs> I can't believe I actually finished this month challenge. <laughs> it's crazy. I know some people uploaded on YouTube every day or filmed all their pieces or I don't know. They they were very motivated, uh, but because this was such a new medium for me, I didn't think it was wise to put that kind of pressure on myself, especially with, you know, my travel for work and everything. This month completely flew by and I'm just so excited that my visual journal for this month are these illustrations. I feel like I really pushed myself in some of the design work, some of the layouts, and it was just so much fun to to work in this new medium. So for October, I picked the theme Mystical Creatures, ooh, uh, which slowly turned into unnatural creatures. I started really strong with Harry Potter, a lot of images and inspiration that came from the movies and the books. Uh, there were times where I felt fatigued, so I tried to draw creatures from the Fantastic Beasts and uh, that was kind of what happened for the first half of the month. I do have a video already up with some explanations of my drawings and a quick flip through if you want to check that out. But as the month kind of kept going, I soon grew tired of Harry Potter, which I didn't think was possible, but you know how you just kind of overwork something and you just kind of want to move forward. So I moved on to the Nightmare Before Christmas. I tried to host a coloring contest, trying, be, trying, be, <laughs> tried being the keyword, and that was kind of a flop. I think one person <laughs> entered it. So congratulations to you, you won. <laughs> Uh, but it was fun to create the pages nonetheless, like the coloring pages. I've never done just stark white images with line work on it, so that was that was very interesting and new for me to try to do. And then I started to use dip pens, and I feel like it heightened my line work like crazy. And I have to tell you, I like it better than fine liners. <laughs> I didn't think I would I would say that after my last dip pen video, but as I've been working with the pens and only using the black ink and not the color ink, I I really really like dip pens. Like a lot. So that finally brings me to this current piece that you see. This is a drawing that is frequently referenced in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Jack looks at it as the epiphany of taking over someone else's holiday will magically cure his ennui about Halloween. Uh, he gives it as a reference to Sally while telling her about his Sandy Claus outfit. And he even breaks the drawing once he has the red suit on as if to wipe away his pumpkin king persona altogether. For some reason, these three references resonated with me and I knew that I wanted this drawing to be the final image for the month. The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of the very few movies I can watch during this season and actually enjoy because I am a huge scaredy cat. <laughs> I will even jump if Abner walks into my office knowing full well he is in the apartment but just the fact that he comes through the door startles me. <laughs> I do not watch gory or psychological thrillers. I do not read suspenseful novels. The trailer, not the movie, but the trailer for Annabelle scared me so much, I slept with my lights on for at least three nights. 
no joke. <laughs> this was also when I lived alone, but still, it was just the trailer. <laughs> I could barely get through Matt Pat's film th theory, and that was a video about conjuring movies, <sighs> which is really sad because it was just a video ab about them. <laughs> I also almost peed myself when I tried to watch Donkey's recap of a scary video game. Yep, just a game. <laughs> so, the moral of that tangent is I do not like scary things. And I feel like there are two types of people in this world, and those are like me, who in like a fight or flight scenario would flee with no questions asked, and those who would like seek out those types of moments. Like those are the people who go to the haunted houses or go to scary movies or, you know, like like to be scared. I, I, I just don't, I, I don't. <laughs> So I don't I don't know are are you one of those people who likes to be scared or are you like me where you would just like flee in the other direction? <laughs> oh my gosh, I just got a shiver at my back and uh that immediately thought of this like sixth sense and I just scared myself. <laughs> ah, see, I'm not joking. It's really really bad. I'm not even joking. Um <clears throat> anywho <laughs> Back to the drawing. <laughs> My line work is a lot more confident as I continue with this piece. I, I think this is either the seventh or eighth or somewhere around that range uh, drawing that I did with dip pins. And in just that amount of time, in just a week, I've learned so much more about them, especially how to problem solve. There's you know, you, you still make mistakes. Um, you can kind of see with this nib, especially this is the 56 school nib from the Speedball 6 uh, drawing set. It's like six nibs in one. It, it can kind of pull up on you. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things where you just kind of have to work around it. And I only like to use it in areas where I knew it would be really dark values that... I, I needed a lot of line work to be able to to get those values. Depending on how you're holding the pin, sometimes it will kind of just pull up. So what I would do is I would I would just kind of move that ink around it. I wouldn't dip into the well for like a really long time after <laughs> after something like that happened. Especially with one of my posts. I believe it was the under your stairs post, which I'll flash up a picture really quick. This this one especially, I had some difficulties with that happening. And so when it happened with this drawing, I found it a lot easier to work through because I had already experienced it with the other one. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm still a novice with ink. I, I'm, I make a ton of mistakes, but it's problem solving out of those mistakes that I feel more confident in. So I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I do love the almost finality of it. So your problem solving skills really do have to be completely heightened. I'm, I'm just so used to charcoal drawings where you're able to push it around and push it around, erase it and smudge it out and push it around and with ink you lay it down or you accidentally splatter it and it's pretty much there to stay. So that that was what was really interesting about this medium for sure. And uh, let's see, I noticed that when just using India ink in a brush I didn't get any bleed through on the other side of this sketchbook of the pages. So I think it was either me scratching too hard with the dip pins or it was just the natural, well, I guess nature of the dip pins that it will make your paper a little bit more weak. I'm not exactly sure because I, I've only really used dip pins on this type of paper, but it is something that I look forward to experimenting with in the future. I did find it odd that even with the same inks or, you know, same style of inks that it just completely 
would bleed through. So at this point, I had to start putting pieces of paper underneath so it wouldn't transfer to the next day's page. But yes. I do really like this drawing. It's a lot more stylized than the other works that I did. I really love ink too. I will say that I really enjoyed getting different values with just depending on how either hard you pushed on the ink or even if you're using fine liner, how much you, how much, like how many lines you, you did, you did it with. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was, it's just very different than what I'm used to. And I will say if it wasn't for Inktober, I don't know if I ever would have dabbled this intricately with this medium. Now this clip, I, I, I slowed it down. Well, it's in real time. I wanted to actually capture the pace that I was going at. This drawing took me about an hour and 15 minutes to do. And with fine liners, I feel like I could have probably finished this in 45, but because of the nature of the dip pins and the fact that you're constantly having to redip them, that you are having to kind of think a little bit harder because of those mistakes that you might make. It's, and, and you have to be more careful. I will admit that, As, especially when you're going over the areas where there's not a line, a lot of line work. You don't want to have all of a sudden a big pool of ink uh, just kind of spurt out of the nib. I've had, I had that happen and then I had to pretty much color in that whole area black, which was a big pain in the tush. <laughs> but yeah, uh, everyone, we are wrapping up this drawing. I really appreciate you spending some time with me as I do this voiceover. I hope you all have a very safe and happy Halloween. If you would like to check out my Inktober, feel free to visit me on Instagram. I would love to chat with you over there. And I hope you have a very nice day as my voice <clears throat> cracks. I, I apologize. It's, I'm starting to lose my voice. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, have a great, have a great day or evening or All Hallows Eve. I will talk to you later.